Hi, I was invited by a rubber factory to demonstrate the volumetric measurement of the stockpile uh, by using the LiDAR scanner. And the LiDAR scanner that I'm using is the 3D Maker Pro Eagle. And the stockpile that I'm measuring is the rubber cup lump. So the factory uh, buy the rubber cup lump from the farmers that they harvested from the uh, rubber tree and the natural rubber is quite expensive so they need the accurate way to measure the volume and also translate into the weight so this is a quite expensive stockpile per cubic meter and they need a accurate measurement of the volume um, a few times a day for each stockpile I think that they leave it here for fermentation they pour some chemicals onto the stockpiles and the volume will change uh, each day. After this process, the rubber will be chopped into small pieces and clean and then packed into a cube, a rubber cube, and then they will export to a tire manufacturer for making a vehicle tire. Uh, so the rubber cup lump is uh, wet all the time and it's quite slippery. So I cannot walk up and scan the top of the pile. So it's a good idea to connect the eagle to the monopod to increase the height of the scanner. Okay, so I have finished the first stockpile. Okay, so now I have moved to the second stockpile. So the original method for measuring the stockpile here is by using a measuring tape and they would try to pile it in the shape of a trapezoid so that they can measure and calculate the volume and this pile is quite short so i don't have to reach out my hand that much to get uh, the top part of the pie scan and the area is quite open and there is no building nearby so um, the scanner is only rely on the IMU for locating the position of the scanner because the pie is quite small and I don't think it will track uh, by using just the pie as a reference. And one of the staff uh, wearing uh, anti-slip shoes. He wants to try uh, making a 3D scan on the top of the pie. So he climb up to see if we can get a better scan on the top. And I found that it's taking too much effort to uh, walk on the rubber pie like this. And it's quite difficult to walk down the pies handling the scanner. To be able to test the accuracy of the eco scanner, I will uh, also make the same scan with the FJD Tron S1, a 28,000 US dollar LiDAR scanner. And then I will compare the measurement result with the cloud compare. Okay, here's the first stockpile scan with the Eagle LiDAR scanner. I process with the point cloud fiddling and the point cloud thinning. Okay, and here's the 3D scan of from the Eagle on the second stockpile. Okay, because of the laser O doesn't have a function to calculate the volume of the stockpile, so I will use the cloud compare. Okay, here's a cloud compare. I'm gonna use the color one uh, from the eagle scan of the first stockpile. With the color, I can see the difference between the, the concrete floor and the stockpile. Uh, next, I'm going to uh, clop it by using the scissors tools. Uh, because anything lower than the concrete floor, like the potholes and the, the, the gutter, it will give a negative value 
when uh, when the volume is calculated so I will um, I trim this out the potholes and the cutter click on here click on delete okay next uh, you see from the bounding box there's some noise uh, floating in the air so I'm going to delete uh, by using the same crop tools click on rectangle tools I'm going to uh, select this part here and crop it click on delete okay now it's quite clean nothing else outside the bounding box so I will uh, align it to the XY plane because the floor is not ground is not flat I try to flat it as much as I can uh, click on three points on the concrete floor so now it's aligned to the XY plane so if I click on the side view but I still can see that the bounding box is not touching uh, the road pavement so there might be some point cloud under the ground so I will crop it one more time this time so I crop anything under here click on delete okay now the bounding box is moved closer to the concrete floor so we don't have any negative value under the concrete floor that will subtract the volume of the stockpile so you need to keep that in mind you need to uh, remove all negative values okay now we have a, a good flat ground and uh, let me check the coordinates so if I click on this point of the concrete floor it's negative 2.236 so I need to move it up uh, 2.236 I do this by click on here move up 2.236 I move it up forward click on check mark uh, let me check the level again so now it's almost zero see here 0 0.008 so now the concrete floor is on zero zero that's, that's a good sign so uh, we are ready to calculate the volume uh, click on the point cloud click on tools volume compute 2.5 d volume okay uh, the first one is the ground you need to set the ground level first you need to set it to zero because uh, zero is now the concrete floor and the source is the point cloud that you are going to uh, select on the point cloud that you are going to calculate for the volume and on the top of the point cloud you see some black spot that's the blind spot that the scanner cannot scan because I didn't walk over uh, the stockpile if I can walk over the stockpile this black spot will be gone but I can't it's very slippery and uh, difficult to climb up so uh, um, I'm gonna fill that black spot with the interpolate value so I click here click on interpolate but if you have a complete scan you can click on leave empty but uh, this time I click on interpolate so the top of the pile will be filled with the interpolate value okay next uh, this is very important the grid uh, the, the uh, software the car compare will uh, create a grid in the size that specified by you uh, for um, LiDAR scanner I think 0 0.05 meter or 5 centimeters grid size is perfect if you don't have like 1000 square meter uh, stockpile um, 5 centimeter is okay but if you have a larger stockpile so you probably need to change that to uh, uh, 20 or 30 centimeter for the grid size but this time the stockpile is a very expensive material so I need uh, and it has an uh, organic shape and so I need to use the, a smaller grid size so I use 5 centimeter and the cell height okay uh, the projection is the direction of the grid that will shoot up to the ceiling uh, to uh, measure the height and volume of the stockpile so it's a z-axis right because z is up and the cell height I mean uh, for five by five square centimeter there's gonna be like um, a few hundred of the point cloud so it will average that uh, value for the height so I choose uh, average height uh, next I'm going to click on update and if I click on leave empty you see that it's going to be a blind spot the white the white color on the top of the pies that wouldn't that wouldn't be included in the volume so uh, I need to use the interpolate to calculate for the missing data 
So now I have one 104.5 cubic meter for the volume, which is incorrect because you see here now the green color is uh, 0 0.066, so it's about 6.16 meters uh, below the zero point. So uh, some part of the ground is, uh, I mean, under the zero point value of the level on the z-axis. So you need to change the default height from 0 to minus 0 0.066. So there won't be any negative value to subtract the, the volume of the stockpiles. So anything above the point 0 will be calculated. So now uh, the volume changed to 115 cubic meters and you can also export. Okay, remember this value 115 cubic meter. I'm going to export grid as a cloud. So you can see here this is the grid. Uh, each dot is a uh, 5 centimeter apart and it a cubic grid that shoot up from the ground use it for calculating the volume so each grid is 5 by 5 centimeter if you measure the distance between these two points it's going to be a 5 centimeters so the blue color is a zero value so zero height so anything in the dark blue color will not create a volume so the volume calculation will start from uh, light blue which is about 10 centimeter above the zero point. Okay, so this is um, a method for calculating uh, the volume by using uh, cloud compare. Uh, so you can use your ego to uh, calculate the stockpile. So next, I'm going to compare the result with the more expensive uh, FJD Tron S1. Okay, here the 3D scan from the FJD Tron S1 uh, using the pole for um, scan this and have already aligned everything uh, everything is the same click on update minus 0 0.054 update okay now um, see here uh, the calculate volume is now 150 exactly the same as the eagle comparing the result from the 4000 US dollar eagle radar scanner and a 28,000 US dollar FJD Trinus one, you get the same result. Okay, next, uh, let me compare the scan from the same stockpiles, uh, but uh, using a different method for scanning. The upper one is about 9.8 million points, and the lower one is only 3.5 million points. So if the operator can go up, and measure the top of the pie, they will have a three times more point cloud. When I use the data for calculating for the volume, it will be much more accurate because a software doesn't have to fill the void. Okay, so instead of uh, creating a stockpile like this shape, um, they should have just created a shape like sharp point like this. So there wouldn't be a lot of area on the top so that uh, when they pile up, in this shape, it will be easier for the 3D scanner to scan and they don't have to climb up for measuring the top of the pies. Okay, thanks you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.